what is the most pressing issue that most working women face and why? I would say equality and because we saw a society when unfortunately many women in different countries don't have the same opportunity. We saw women who don't have access to education, to choose their dreams, to follow their passion. And this is something that I would like to change in the world because every women deserve to follow their own dreams. I'm grateful to be here, follow my dream. And I also want to see other women follow their dreams. Thank you. <laughs> Brazil is muy dulce. So Brazil's answer, I'll say it was good talking about equality. But at some point, I feel like she never really, she was not really so fluent. But the way she ended it up saying that she's happy to be following her dreams and that all women should also do the same, I think it was good. But let's hear what her other competitor has to say. Well, I can only speak from a Caribbean perspective. I come from beautiful but small islands. And I have to say, sometimes it's not a lack of talent or skills, it's a lack of opportunities. So I'm so grateful for Miss Rule because you're allowing me this platform to really follow my dreams, as my sister said. But the truth is, I just want to take this moment to speak to every little boy and every little girl from my country, my small island, and other small nations that may be watching this. I want you to know your voice is just as powerful as anybody else's. Your passion is just as needed. Your light is just as bright. I believe in you, but you have to believe in yourself and come represent our small island nations. Thank you. So guys, for Trinidad and Tobago, I think she was so fluent. The answer was so, so good. See that it's not because of lack of skills or intelligence, but lack of opportunity. I understand this so well because my cousin told me that he knows people who can play football or soccer very, very well. But because they never had opportunities or finances, they were not able to follow this passion of theirs and rather not to find something else to be doing. Imagine if the finances or opportunities were available. I think those boys could become great footballers by now. So I understand this so well. I can relate to this. I think it's so good. And I think she might just be the one. I want to wish she that and Tobago all the best. If you could convince people from all over the world to adopt a green and planet-friendly practice, what would it be and why? Thank you very much for the question. It would definitely be agriculture. Where I come from, we're very big on sustainable agriculture. And this is because it's not just an issue of green. It's also an issue of solving issues such as hunger and poverty and ensuring that communities and people who are unable to make a living can sustain themselves. But more than that, every time we take care of nature, we take care of the future. I'd love to encourage every single person to take up social responsibility and ensure and ensure from a very personal level that you take your part in being a Beauty with a Purpose ambassador and sustaining our environment and our beautiful world. Botswana's answer that was so, so good. Seriously. She first of all said agriculture and that was good. But the way she finished, that's what made it to be so big. Seriously. Seeing that she wants everyone to become their own Beauty with a Purpose ambassador and take small steps or take their own part in environmental responsibility i think that's something great and she was just so fluent I understood everything so well it was so straight to the point and good i want to wish her all the best if i would convince people one thing i would tell them is to plant trees when we plant trees we avoid drought i'm going to speak from my background where i come from people are very poor because they face drought when you face drought you're going to sell up your children to go and get married i am one of the survivors that got that survived from getting married at a very young age and i am standing here i feel like if parents get to know this and do this one of their children would make it here at this global stage and they will represent women just need a voice they need to know that they can make it in any way yes thank you so much yeah. Talking about planting trees because it helps prevent drought, I think that was so good, seriously. I really wish was talking and then talking about surviving gets marriage at a young age because it's because of poverty that you send your young girls to go and get married to rich men. I understood that so well as you saying the truth. I think it's kind of like a physical geography class, seriously. But nonetheless, she was fluent. But I think for Africa, I'm going to go with Botswana. Yeah. If you could shed light on an issue concerning women's health care, what would it be and why? Thank you for your question. 
Uh, being a woman is a big gift and I can't be more grateful to stand here proudly as a woman representing all of the women in the world. And I think uh, the issue which we never should forget is about the menstruation. Because women in many countries are still facing the shame when it comes to menstruation and they're afraid to talk about it and they don't get the political attention that they need to. Thank you. Thank you, Czech Republic. So guys, for Czech Republic, talking about menstruation, I think that's a good thing. And I think it's whereby boys are laughing at girls because they're menstruating or they menstruate and it came out. You know, yeah, so I think um, Czech Republic, that was so, so good. Also enjoyed her English, she was talking so well and that's good. So. I would shed light on the fact that there is a lack of compassion and that there is a stigma surrounding women's health care. Throughout the world, there's women facing period poverty who are made to feel embarrassed for being female. There's children who are missing school because of a natural bodily function. So I think it's up to all of us as strong, independent women representing our countries today to take a stand and educate the masses about this issue. All right, thank you so much. Talking about educating women because women are still being discriminated in a way. For example, they don't go to school. I think that's good, yeah. But the question was talking about healthcare. I don't really know if she followed the question here, but for Europe, I'm going to have to go with Czech Republic. But nonetheless, they both did a great job. Can you suggest a way that women can be empowered through social media? Well, today we live in a world where social media is of such power, of such use, that conversation and awareness can create change. And I do believe that social media has the power to change the world, living in the Generation Z and being a part of Generation Z. Just conversation and awareness around the fact of how women empowerment can take its recourse towards progressive march and perfection. And standing here on the platform of Miss World, I take the light to be the change to be the source and using social media to its utmost utility to be the power of change. For India, I think she was fluent when she was talking. She speaks so well, no mistakes. But at the same time, the kind of words she was in her vocabulary, I think it was a little bit too high for me and it sounded a little bit rehearsed. Seriously, it was just flowing, but at the same time, I can't really process what she said. But still, I want to wish her all the best. Good evening, everyone. First, of course, social media plays a big role in our life. But for, to empower women, first we have to start by ourselves, the beauty pageant, to normalize being authentic, to normalize that it's okay to not be perfect. It's okay to be ourselves, and that's why we are here. Today, I've witnessed that all of us are different here, but everyone is beautiful by, by, by her own way, and that's why we are all here, queens. So to everyone watching me now, be who you are, be authentic to yourself, just be you, because that's what makes you perfect and unique. And let's normalize being authentic. Thank you so much. So guys, for Lebanon, I enjoyed the way she was talking. It was like she got emotional. I wanted to get her point across. But nonetheless, I love what she said about being authentic on social media. On social media, there are a lot of fake spaces, fake people, but I like what she was saying. And also saying that everyone is beautiful in their own way. I think that's something good So I want to wish her all the best. I think for Asia, I'll have to go with Lebanon. Yeah, but I want to wish them all the best. So guys, for the top four, for me, I have Trinidad and Tobago, Botswana, Czech Republic and Lebanon, as you can see it here. Yeah, so let's see who is in the top four. The title of this world America and the Caribbean goes to Trinidad and Tobago goes to goes to Trinidad and Tobago Congratulations <laughs> I have never been so scared This world Africa goes to Botswana Yes, Botswana, congratulations Czech Republic. Czech Republic! Congratulations. Czech Republic, congratulations. This world, Asia and Lebanon. It's Lebanon, guys. Lebanon. Lebanon! Yes! Yes! Lebanon! Ah, guys, oh my God. Right here. Okay. All of them, the media. Congratulations! Lebanon is like the stat. All my favorite rights made it. I'm so happy, seriously. Thank you. Namaste everyone, sorry, <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> so firstly, when I stand here, I represent 1.4 million people of Trinidad and Tobago. 
And what I can offer Miss Roald is the mindset of my people. In India, I know you say, Vasudev Kuban Singh, Kudam, sorry, I butchered it. <laughs> but the point is you say, the world is one family. In Sweet TNT, we say, may every creed and race find an equal place. And so when I, the way I live my life is with that motto, with that mantra. And I believe Miss Roald has a similar mantra. I believe when you have compassion and understanding for differences, you can really make a difference in the world and work hand in hand to create a bright future. For me, I'm so honored to be here and to share the mindset of TNT because we can truly make a difference. In Sweet Trinidad and Tobago, we acknowledge our similarities, but more importantly, we celebrate our differences. We see the beauty and diversity and we promote inclusion. So I would love to be part of this organization and to do so and work with you all to create a brighter future and a happy world. Thank you so much. Well done. Yeah. I like her final word. I think it was so cool, so smooth, and talking about her people and her similarities with Indian people also, that was something wise to do. When she was talking, I could notice that it was like she was excited, she was nervous, like the pressure and everything was there. Yeah, but still she handled it so well. And I also talk like that, I talk and I laugh also, I talk and I make mistakes, but I want to wish her all the best. Thank you and good evening everyone. I believe that I should be the next in this world because I am the true essence of beauty with a purpose. For as long as I can remember, I've always used my skills, my passion, my talent, my intellect and my love to uplift the lives of those around me. I've done so through my Genesis project, which levels the playing field for children living in poverty. I use my legal expertise to offer legal solutions to those who cannot afford them and each and every day, I share love and kindness, but most importantly, I love this platform. I love it with my whole heart, and I aspire to see a world where beauty with a purpose is not just a Miss World concept, but where each and every person uses that quality that makes them beautiful to uplift the lives, the, the lives of those around them. And I know that I can't do it alone, and as Julia Molly says, is it not better to light one candle than to not see in darkness. I aspire to be the driving force that inspires the world to light their own little candles. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's why so guys, for Botswana, I think at this point she has spoken a lot and her voice is, you know, but nonetheless, I enjoyed what she said word for word and using Julia Molly as a reference, that was something smart also. So I want to wish her all the best also. I think she's deserving and let's see how it goes. Good evening. Namaste India. Krasny Vecher Česká Republiko. <laughs> Dear Shark Tanks, I want you to imagine one thing. Imagine that you're a child and you have your dreams and your hopes. But as you grow older, your dreams are going further and further away. Now imagine that you are a parent and your child needs to go through the same situation, having a dream, but while growing up, the dream is going further and further. And that's because the children doesn't get the proper education to fulfill the dream career. As of 2024, it's still a fact that 250 million children are out of the school worldwide. And that's why my lifelong mission is providing quality education to unprivileged children. I believe that education is a fundamental right every child deserves. And I'm here to advocate for those children. It's something what I've been doing for a very long time, much before I entered the pageantry. It's something was really close to my heart and what I'll be doing either I win or I don't win the Miss World. Thank you so much. <laughs> she really got my heart seriously that when you're young as a child, you have dreams, but as you grow older, because of lack of opportunities to fulfill those dreams, you don't still have those dreams. And seeing your child having dreams and then that dream just start fading away. I think it's so, so good. It's emotional, it got me. She finished by saying that even if she wins or she does not win, she has been doing this for long, even before she joined pageantry and she'll still continue that. I like that so much. I think it was really authentic and sincere and as we share the public all the best. Marhaba again. Well, I see Miss World as a very strong, confident woman, but most importantly, a woman with a purpose. 
Born and raised in Lebanon, I've learned how to spread love wherever I go, how to have respect, and how to rise after every fall, because even the biggest non-nuclear explosion in the history couldn't stop us from dreaming and achieving. So that's why I want to share with the world the resilience, the resilience, love, respect, and compassion. <laughs> so to everyone yes. listening to me now, I just want to say thank you, Lebanon for teaching me how to be in this world. Thank you. I enjoyed her final speech. I don't think she was necessarily talking about why she should be the next Miss World, but she, I think she was just grateful that she's here and all, yeah. But in general, I think she also said very well. For me, at this point, I'll have to go with Czech Republic for the winner, then Trinidad and Tobago, Botswana and Lebanon. But let's see what the judges are going to say, but I want to wish them all the best, yeah. Let's run around.